Hey guys, it's Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge. Today we're taking a look at this knife. It's a knife that is made in a Chinese factory somewhere and it looks like there's a number of different companies that put their brand name on it. Fury Gear is one of the brands that does that and I got actually three of this same knife in two different colors from uh, Gearbest. Uh, one of them I ordered and paid for out of my own coin and two of them actually came from my representative at Gearbest. Uh, I think she intended only to send me one, but uh, two of them to review. As you can see, it's a pretty good movement on this knife. Uh, titanium handle scales, they say D2 steel on the blades, and I've seen this same knife with at least one other brand name and another one that didn't have any brand name. Um, I think it's Effingro and Kanku uh, and some others have this exact same knife as well. And so you can get this knife in a number of different prices. And uh, let's take a good close look at this and see if you want to get one for yourself. Stick around. So this is my first video back at my home setup. So we got a nice, almost straight down view. And here's the knives. We've got two of them here. I do not have a gray one. Uh, they call this teal, this uh, light green, almost minty kind of color. And they call this slate blue. And you can just get it in standard gray, which is just the standard color of titanium. So first, let's take a look at this finish. It's an anodization that they've uh, done on here. And it looks pretty good. The, uh, the colors are fairly even all the way across. Uh, the blue one shows a little bit of wear because I was carrying the blue one a lot. And that's actually going to be one of the cons. Uh, just a slight one. It shows wear somewhat e more easily than I would prefer it to. So just a little bit of wear that shows up on the uh, handle if it rubs against other metal of some sort. Right side pocket clip. It's a milled pocket clip. There's two screws from the inside that you can't quite see at this angle, but two screws come in to hold the pocket clip. That's a good thing. And the pocket clip is a good design. Holds quite well. I'll show you that later. Open pillar construction. We've got hourglass pillars right there. It's a flipper. You can see the flipper tab coming out right there. You know, nicely chamfered on the edges, nicely rounded, nice smooth action. Ball bearings, which help it to just fly open. And you know, all of them that I've tried, you know, they just fly open very, very well. So that's a good thing. Uh, you've got Torx screws, so it's not a proprietary screw, but it looks good. A little bit of milling on the one side. You've got five little lines, little dashes to give it some decoration. Huge lanyard hole right there. And we've got sort of a clip point, cross between a clip point and a drop point that's slightly rounded with a chamfer. D2 steel that's stonewashed. A little hole in here. Uh, that hole doesn't do anything unless you want to open it this way, you know, or with the flipper. And when it's closed, the detent that holds it closed is also quite good. So there's the initial overall of the knife. And let's start talking about some of the specifics and pros and cons and all the other good stuff about these knives. So let's put that aside here. First, let's look at the action. You've got... Uh, you know, the flipper tab there, you can use the light switch method, just pulling back and the blade just wants to fly right open. Very well. Very good detent on it to overcome to get it to start going. Uh, nice lock stop pin right there. Works very well, rock solid. Uh, the lock up is, well, not bad. It's a little bit later on, to, on this green one than I'd like. Uh, but the, uh, the the blue one's quite nice. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so you can see that. So you can see where the lockup is there on this one and how it's a little bit further on the green one. I have to turn it on an angle a bit to see. You can see right in there where my thumbnail is. Let me get this one out of the way again. Right there, there's a little bit of a cutout. And that's where the... Uh, a little bit of a lock 
arm is, uh, not a lock arm, a over travel stop arm is so that you can't push the uh, lock arm out too far. So that's a good thing that they put in with that uh, lock bar insert. Well done, well made. Uh, no blade play side to side, really snug, up and down, there's no blade play either. Let's zoom back out again. I'll take it apart and show you a picture of, you know, the uh, bearings and everything, all that good stuff in there, so you can take a good look at that. So there'll be pictures of that right now. I like that nice hourglass shape to those pillars there for this open pillar construction. And that's it for what you want to see on this knife. It's actually a very simple, simple knife. Not, a lot, not an awful lot to it. It's just a well-made saber grind, all belly, nice strong tip to the point, thick blade. You've got a little bit of recess here. I forgot to mention that where your thumb rests. Just lets the meat of your thumb get in there. Really comfortable for long-term hard use. You might be tempted to put your finger forward and use it that way. And as long as you keep pulling your finger backward that way, you might be safe. Uh, I think it's a little bit risky. I'd suggest you know just using it this way and don't use that as a forward choil. It sharpens up quite well. It takes an awful lot of sharpening though to get it done right. And I'll mention it later on. That's one of my beefs is the final grind on this knife. What do we have? Uh, the next beef about the action here is this pivot. These pivot screws are loose on all three of them that I've had. After just a little bit of use, the knife came loose and then it would be, you know, off to one side because it's gotten all loose and soft in there. So what you need in here is some kind of thread locker without being a strong locker because if you do a thread locker in here you're gonna have a pain of a time taking it apart thankfully I've reviewed a really good product uh, called VC3 uh, I've got a video about that I'll put that video on the very end of the screen right in this area the very last screen that you see at the end of the video it'll be right here uh, not only about that VC3 but there's another product that you might want to get and that is drive grip and that's because these screws that are in this the body of the knife, they're soft and they are too soft by a fair margin. Uh, I had one of these, the one that I'm not showing here, I had stripped out one of the screws completely uh, before I put all that drive grip on the screwdriver and it just stripped very, very easily with, you know, that's a very soft screw is, is what I'm trying to say. So you need something to uh, be very, very careful, get the screwdriver that's the exact right size. Uh, I think those are T6 and this is T8. And if you get a product like Drive Grip, what it does is it creates, it, cre it puts a little grit on the end of your screwdriver and you put it in your screwdriver in there and it kind of helps it to grip, Drive Grip, and it stops the knife, stop the, the screwdriver from slipping in the screw head. And it works with all types of screws. It's a really, really good product uh, if you can get your hands on it. Uh, it's very inexpensive in the United States and in the rest of the world, it's pretty dear. So if you know anybody in the United States, get them, get them to buy it for you and ship it to you because that'll be the cheapest way to get it. Uh, there's some other cons as well, but before we get to those, let's do all of the dimensions on this thing. The cutting edge and the blade length measured from the tip of the blade to the closest part of the, the uh, handle here is the same. It's 9.1 centimeters. 3.58 inches. The blade thickness is 3.9 millimeters. That's 0.1535 inches. The blade depth is 2.54 centimeters. That's one inch exactly this way. Of course, it gets smaller as you get closer to the tip. The thickness of the edge behind the grind is 0.6 millimeters. That's 0 0.0235 inches. So it's a little bit thicker than I'd like, but not terrible by any stretch of the imagination. Here's another con, the grind angle. Well, first off, the grind angle is too steep. It's more like for a chopping kind of knife. It's anywhere between 23 and 27 degrees per side. And it gets worse right here close to the uh, handle 
very often they're grinding it at an angle and then here close to the handle they start grinding it really steep. So it takes a fair bit of time, a fair bit of work to get the grind angle down to 20 degrees per side, which I did on this one, but I didn't do it completely. I'll show you a close up of this blue knife. How there's a slightly different color right there. That's because I just didn't want to keep on taking off more and more and more steel to get down to that spot there because it was ground so steeply that the steel just goes away. So I fixed it to 20 degrees per side. It's just not fixed right at the end yet. And same thing on this side. Over the course of the life of the knife, you know, as I sharpen it, each time I take off a little bit more steel, uh, it will get closer and closer to the very end here of getting fixed. I just didn't want to remove way too much steel right now. So the grind angle is a bit of a problem on this knife. Um, let's talk about the handle now. The handle length is 12.1 centimeters, that's 4.77 inches. The grip area inside here is 10 centimeters, that's 3.94 inches, basically four inches long. The handle thickness, so not counting the pocket clip, the handle thickness is 1.24 centimeters, that's 0.489 inches, so just under half an inch thick this way. The handle depth, that's this, it's biggest right here. It, it looks like it's bigger here, but the angle comes down here, so it stays the same. It's very much the same there as right here. 2.4 centimeters, 0.948 inches, so just under an inch. And the total length of this knife with the blade deployed from the end of the handle to the tip of the blade is 21.2 centimeters, 8.35 inches. How much does this bad boy weigh? Well, it's 135 grams, 4.75 ounces. So four and three quarter ounces. That lets it get under five ounces. Uh, right now, the balance point is pretty good though. Uh, it's right, there it is. Oh, it wants to fall. So it's just behind this second uh, screw here, just where you like it. You want it right where your index finger sits right here. So that's a really good thing. Let's go over uh, some more of the information about the price. How much does this thing cost? Well, it really depends on where you buy it. The least expensive I could find was at Gearbest, and that's where I got mine. So I recommend Gearbest as the place to get these knives. Uh, depending on the color, the um, teal, which is this one, is on sale right now uh, for the next uh, week or so. It all depends on when you watch the video, of course. For $32.99, that's US, that equals about $43 Canadian, about uh, 28 and a half euros, about 25 and three quarter pounds, roughly. Uh, the other two colors, the blue and the gray, is $35.88 US which is around $47 Canadian, about 31.14 euros, about 28 British pounds. Uh, another place you can get this knife with a different branding instead of Fury Gear, it says Canku, $39.99 at Amazon, and that's for all of the colors. So $40 instead of $33 or $36, you know. So it costs a little bit more at Amazon, and uh, the $39.99 equals about $52.24 Canadian, about 34.6 euros, about 31.2 pounds. So it all depends on where you want to get it. Are there other places you can get this? Yes, there's other brand names around. I don't have a listing for them. Uh, please use my links down below if you want to support this channel. If you don't want to support my channel, hey, no problem. But if you want to help me out, please consider using my Gearbest links for this um, because that's the company that sent me two of these to review. Thank you to Gearbest. Uh, I try to give a totally objective review. I do say the negatives that I find about knives no matter where I get the knives from. Uh, I try to be very open and honest that way. Let's go over the pros and cons again of this knife. Great hand feel, great control. Lock bar insert is a very good thing, well designed. It's got the over travel stop in there and it uh, you know, meets up with the blade and locks up solid. There's no blade playing or anything like that. So that's a really good thing. Great action with this, with the detent and the ball bearings. Very, very smooth. And, you know, when you go to close it, it just 
wants to close very nicely great action I think it looks really good it's got a great look to it um, it may not be d2 steel I don't know for sure they say that it's d2 steel I do know that in my experience with sharpening I can tell how hard a steel is and it is a fairly hard steel it's got to be between 59 and 60 on the Rockwell hardness scale the Rockwell C scale so I think it's a good steel was it durable during use yes I cut a lot of stuff with this and the edge from the factory cut very well this is still a factory edge here looks good cuts well it's just a crazy angle on it and you can get it to 20 degrees per side without too much work so that's okay um, I wish they would have done better from the factory though and um, I think it's a good quality steel for the price even if it's not D2 nice stone wash on there nice chamfer on the cutout here just really really nice looking knife great pocket clip uh, oh I didn't show you how well the pocket clip works so let's take a look at that real quick so the pocket clip will uh, slide onto the pants quite well you've got a little over an inch well no, a centimeter and a half not an inch and a half about two-thirds of an inch sticking out centimeter and a half not bad it looks good sitting out like that and uh, it's very functional the clip holds well and looks good doing it how about the cons yes the cons we always got to talk about the cons eventually don't we so the cons for this knife well I've talked about a number of them already the body screws they're way too soft uh, they need to be better so if you're gonna get one of these knives uh, try to be very very careful with it get the exact screw for it a screwdriver and if you can get drive grip use that product uh, get something in these pivot screws to help you uh, help them stay closed or you know every time before you take it out for the day check your screws to make sure they're nice and snug as tight as you want them to be without being over tight um, very poor final grind that's another con but you can fix that if you know how to sharpen knives and if you don't know how to sharpen knives please learn it'll save you an awful lot of money in the long run and it will give you much more enjoyment of your knives uh, you can use a knife for an awful lot longer if you can actually sharpen it so that's a really good thing to sharpen your knives that's a good thing uh, so the poor final grind so you got to sharpen that up the uh, titanium handle scales handles show wear so be careful with that that's a potential negative um, for somebody that's a big negative for other people it's not a negative at all that the pocket clip is right side only so we've got a right side pocket clip nothing on the left decent knife I like this knife it looks good just the nice little touches the chamfer all the way around the edge of the handle it gets a little bit bigger right here the chamfer on the, the hole here chamfer over here on the flipper tab I like this nice swedge you know it just is a good looking good feeling nice knife that I really like to have and I really enjoy having this knife so thank you so much for watching my videos thank you for liking sharing commenting and subscribing those of you who aren't aware I've backed up or I make a copy of all my videos on uh, YouTube uh, that's another network and I'm putting it on real TV I'm, I'm starting to set up that network as well so that all my videos will be available to people on a variety of channels because I know that there's people taking my videos and you know just copy them and putting them on their own channels uh, on other networks and stuff so I figure I might as well do it too so if you see my channel on YouTube and on real TV uh, that is probably me putting up that channel and uh, you, you can tell by the write-ups and stuff it'll be the write-ups will be identical on both channels generally speaking uh, all three channels so you can tell that it's really me thanks again guys remember always cut towards your chum not your thumb <laughs>